Roundtree. Now, if you guys don't know who that is, he is a trumpeteer, a soul jazz trumpeteer from yes. Detroit. We're becoming the Detroit show. I mean, I know I'm from Detroit, but we got a lot of artists who have who have been from Detroit well, who are, you know, kicking it. And I have to make a whole. It's a it's a, it's a re untapped market. No, huh? it's t- huh? look. Hey, look, <laughs> Motown did their thing, but evidently it's a re untapped market because you got these guys coming out of nowhere, that, and you, all these musicians and artists are coming right out of your city. So they're thinking evidently I'm something needs to be capped. To be I'm coming out. That's what happened. They're like, what the hell? But um, but no, no, no. We no. Let me tell you something. We had to uh, class it up a little bit tonight. Get okay. some jazz right, going. Class it up. You know. Grown you know. People. You know I love my hip hop and everything, you know, and um, I have my hip hoppers on all the time, and you know I've actually had some some more inspirational stuff and people on, but tonight we're going to class it up really nice for you, and um, we're going to have Lynn Roundtree, like I said, he's from Detroit, and um, now he has been playing what has been described as soulful, funky, and sensual. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right, player. I see you. So sensually and what else? Funky. Funky. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So you got you got okay. you got the, the, the Marvin Gaye, Kim and George Clinton fusion thing going on right now. I got you, bro. I got you. I got you. Yes. I got all right, you. what's up, Lynn? Um, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thanks for having me. You guys are uh, having a good time already. We Which always we have a good time. That's what we do here, you know. Well, we that's, gotta, a, you know. that's a good thing. <laughs> it is. Well, thank you so much again for coming on to the show. We want to definitely welcome you. Um, being a trumpeteer. Now, first of all, I have to let you know that, I, you know, I like saxophones and all that. The saxophone, as I call it, is a beautiful oh, thing. Oh, God. Oh, it is. <laughs> but there's something about the trumpet that I love. And do you want to know what it is? What is that? <laughs> All right, everybody. Here it is. I have played the trumpet when I was in high school, you know, like five years ago. <laughs> Shut oh. up. You yes. did not play trumpet in high school. I did. I, what? you know... <laughs> I play the trumpet. Um, Lynn, I know um, I, I'm i not as good as you, <laughs> uh. but I played, and um, it, I was a flag girl <laughs> in the band. The you know, reason why you like the trumpet is because you were, uh, you were down with the, uh, with the attempt at trying to play it. You know how difficult it is, and so you feel sorry for me. <laughs> well, you know what? You know what happened, Lynn? I pick the trumpet because it had three valves and I was like oh I can do that oh, yeah. I can do that um what I realized though it's hard to play <laughs> which is why most I guess most women don't usually play the trumpet <laughs> you know it's, it's a hard well, instrument yeah it's a very difficult instrument people really don't understand that I mean all jokes aside it's uh it's mm-hmm. uh it's a lot more physical uh there's a lot more physical uh, things that go into having to play the trumpet, particularly with your embouchure. Uh, so that's why I say the, the saxophones are cop out. People that, that couldn't play the trumpet went on and played the saxophones. Why? They come a dime a dozen. You got them on every corner. You do, don't you? <laughs> you know, they're playing in their, what is it? They they go into their apartment and they play it and everybody can hear it. It's like, okay. <laughs> Someone's no, playing their saxophone. My saxophone buddies, I, I, you know, I mess with them all the time, and uh, you know, certainly, I, I, I always have the, the old, uh, the old joke that uh, they had a sale on saxophones about 20 years ago. Everyone got one for <laughs> Christmas. You got to miss them running around, particularly in this genre. I mean, it's, uh, it's a saxophone-dominated genre, but as right. the trumpets, uh, how trumpets and flugelhorns go, the three most requested songs in smooth jazz or contemporary jazz history. Happen to be mm-hmm. songs that were made famous by trumpet players. One being "Feel So Good," Mr. Chuck Mangione, mm-hmm. I about. and uh, uh, the the remake of "Human Nature" by Miles Davis. Okay, right, okay. right, Miles. You know what? Um, so, why did you choose the trumpet? 
Well, I chose the trumpet uh, off the bat because my father played uh, the cornet mm-hmm. in high school, and then my uh, his his mother actually played the cornet, and and there was a cornet sitting around that they had that same cornet. My dad had since stopped playing, and he gravitated to the guitar, and he's played guitar mm-hmm. every morning before, uh, before he went to work, and I went to school to watch him. But I used to always be interested Aww. with that. That, that was on the mantelpiece that I was told never to touch, you know, and she was told never to touch. <laughs> we always want to do. So it was stuck in my mind. I've got to touch this coronet. And uh, 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 so, you know, when it came time to to, uh, to choose instruments in the fifth grade, uh, I uh, I said, well, you know, I, probably no other instrument I want to play than, than the trumpet. Because my dad said, once you learn how to play it, then you can touch it. And, and uh, that, that started oh, okay. my, my my journey in playing the trumpet. Now, wow. um, now when you play the trumpet, now were you in the band and the marching band and all that too, or or no, yeah. you're not that nerdy? I, oh, okay. <laughs> I was, hey, watch it. I was a cool because I was down with the peeps, but I also uh, played sports and I played the trumpet, and I dared anybody to mess with me. So, oh. uh, but <laughs> you know, seriously. Seriously, I, I, I chose the trumpet. I chose the band to get out of class for a couple couple times a week. Anybody said, you know, you can get out of class and kind of ham it up, and and you don't have to, you know, be with anybody else. So actually, it was it, it, it's turned out to be a slacker move, but uh, but I ended up liking the trumpet, and then uh, you know, I, I carried it on through high school. I did play varsity football and and did all of the, the other things, but I also always uh, played that trumpet and, and had that a part of me, and then. And then when I went to college, uh, you know, it, it helped me get into college. It gave me a part, partial scholarship to Florida A&M along with a business scholarship that I got. Uh, so my first year was paid for because of uh, both band and, and business. So, I mean, you know, I started to realize that there might be something on the financial end with this trumpet if I if I learned how to play it and play it well. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I did all the small things, you know, concert band, marching band, uh, you know, pet band, whatever you want to call it, and, all the way up through uh, through college until I got out and, and decided that uh, the thing might 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 be serious. I'm serious to it. Well, see, this so, is cool, man, because this, mm-hmm. this is this is a cool segment because I'm a drummer. So I oh. was I was marching band marching band drum line. I played drums, you know, throughout high school and stuff like that, and played for a while. And I've been, you know, jazz to me was one of a one of the the main music groups that actually would make you really have to listen and and do real, and do well in your craft because anybody can play a four note beat, okay, as far as the drummer yeah. goes, that's a dime a dozen. But to get into t- different time signatures and syncopation and stuff like that and knowing your pitch and knowing the the key the key changes and all that stuff, it takes you have to listen to jazz in order to be able to understand it. And even still, with the trumpet, you know, the trumpet players, I was thinking of the Ohio players because that was like the hot sauce of the whole music, the horns. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. True, right, yeah. You know, the, the whole, the whole folk from the South 70s. Power, Earth, Wind, Fire. Yeah. Well, you know, for... You had um, that whole funk and, oh, man, it was just so many memories. Well, with jazz nowadays, um, Lynn, what do you think about how jazz has changed over the years, and what category would you put yourself in as far as jazz? There's all types, you know, there's, you have your contemporary jazz, smooth jazz, mellow jazz, and then, you know, so where do you actually, where do your music lie? Well, my my music is what I like to call instrumental R&B, because basically when you, okay. if, if you take the, I mean, because I, I don't. Sometimes you get pigeonholed just because you play an instrument, so everyone automatically assumes that uh, you, you play jazz if you're playing a solo, or if you're in some group, they assume that you're in some you know background horn section. I mean, so you, mm-hmm. you get pigeonholed really. Um, but the music that I make, if you listen to you know my my projects uh, over the years, uh, you can easily slip a vocalist in on my projects, and and it would be uh, termed R&B. I mean, it's just like R&B singers. You had Sarah Vaughn and, and Ella Fitzgerald, who were clearly jazz singers. Uh, right. But then you have Whitney Houston and 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 the likes that that are considered R&B singers. And, and no one ever goes to Whitney and say, "Hey," and says, "Hey, you, you are you know, didn't go to her and say, you know, are you a jazz singer or Beyonce? Are you a jazz singer or you know, uh, Jennifer Hudson? Are you a jazz singer? No, that they, they already know that they sing R&B. But you know, so it's that's that's how I consider 
the music, what you know, what I play in terms of uh, the music and my style. Uh, now, what's happened to jazz over the years? To your other other question, it's it's, it's mm-hmm. an ever evolving uh, genre of music. I mean, it, it's I mean, it's tough to try and and figure out what jazz really is. So I like to say jazz, and it's in the definition of jazz is. It just embodies uh, improvisation, and and I think that's the essence of jazz because it's tough to you know like there's so many different forms of what they call jazz. I mean you have you know jazz actually started out as the dance music of of, of the day back in the in, in the 20s and 30s, and you right. know, they had these big bands, and you know there wasn't any there wasn't any bebop or any 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 you know any of that was considered straight ahead jazz. It wasn't it, it wasn't happening. And the only reason why that that developed into that type of art form is a financial and a political reason is because a lot a lot of you know the, the big dance bands of the time uh, had club owners who you know New York politicians wanted to dip into the pockets of these club owners that were making a lot of money, so they started to tax these guys anytime they had dancing in their clubs. So to circumvent that, wow. and I have to pay this New York tax. They got wise and said, you know what? How can we bring the music that's being played at these these Big establishments where people are dancing uh, to help them and have them enjoy the music, but at the same time not have them dance. They went to the musicians and said, "Hey, we're going to pick four or five of you guys out of the, the bassy bands and, and the big bands and put you in a little club, but you need to make the music. You need to play something that people know, but you need, need to, to play it in a way that people won't get up and dance." So what did they do? They, <laughs> they, took the temp- they made all these weird core changes. They did weird, innovative things, but you know, of course. Uh, you know, it's it, it's all in the process of of trying to to do something else. It wasn't like they sat down and hey, we're going to create this art form because that's what we're feeling. No, it, it was born out of out of necessity. But out of necessity came something that was great. And so, you know, I get into it with the jazz heads all the time about oh, jazz is this. Hey, no, jazz was <laughs> was, was, was hip hop of the day. You know, it, it 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 the politicians actually made it jazz. What you guys are trying to say, and it's all it's right. been evolving. I mean, Miles Davis took it on a run. Uh, all these, you know, all these contributors just, you know, changed the course of the sound of music. I mean, before Miles and Bitches Brew, most people didn't play on any amped up or or, or amplified instruments. You know, like uh, you know, electric synthesizers, synthesizers and things of the sort. Uh, before Bitches Brew came out, after Bitches Brew, now you have a collection of electric bass players as opposed to upright bass players you know, drummers and, and different sounds and different elements to the music. And so it evolved even further. And then, you know, now it's 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 it is what it is and I think actually it's it's diminished some because people aren't as innovative as they used to be, but it's still enough but an art form of improvisation. That's basically what jazz is. Wow, well we got a nice little history lesson. I did not know that. I didn't realize okay. that that they had done that because it changed it up a little bit, so people literally wouldn't dance. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Well, see, um, well, let me ask my thing. I've always thought that that without jazz, there would be no hip hop because to me, jazz music was the that was the hip hop of the day. Before there was a hip hop, before there was a a an R and B, there was jazz that actually spoke to you. Politically, consciously, and all that stuff. Right. Before there was even a, a political movement or anything like that. So if you hip hop owes its owes its gratitude to, to jazz, in my opinion, because well, it was yeah, so think, improvisational and just so you know just in, you in light, I guess. Popular music can owe its, particularly American music, can owe its. Uh, uh, foundation to to jazz because I mean like you said I mean you went you know no one's playing amped up music before Bitches Brew and Miles Davis I mean so you know then right. you had a bunch of guys exploring with the uh, with the amped up music and and you know then it gravitated into rock and it gravitated into a lot of different things and so I mean you know so between between that and the blues and, and blues guitars I mean some of your greatest rock guitarists emulate uh, and study our great blues guys, you know, I mean, exactly. Eric Clapton. Yeah, he'll 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 acknowledge that he learned everything he knew from some of our uh, you know, Buddy Holly and, and people like that, some of the guys that, that, that were founders in, in the blues blues guitar. So mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, the foundation of jazz and blues uh is in every part of our our modern music, including hip hop, but 
you know, even pop music. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know what, uh, Lynn, I want to find out what is uh, coming up with you. Where where will you be? I see that you're going to be on a cruise next year with some little, yeah. some, more, some more artists and everything. Tell us about that. Yeah, the, the Maxwell people, uh, the people that put, put together the Maxwell Cruise uh, uh, are doing this igno- inaugural cruise uh, with Maxwell, Lettucey, uh, a whole lot of popular wow. artists. And, uh, yeah. and they're also filling some of the uh, contemporary jazz artists, Brian Culberson and all these, you know, all these guys. And I'm just happy enough to uh, have made it to a level where I've even been considered to be played on uh, on a ship full of so much talent, Anthony Hamilton, Joe Scott. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'm looking oh, forward to that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I mean, now when is that coming up or in, are all the tickets sold? <laughs> Oh no, it's right. May third, and it's still tickets are wide open. It's it's the, it's the inaugural cruise, uh, okay. and uh, I mean you can go to maxwell 7 cscom dot com or you can go to lynnrapsmusic dot com and you know catch the link off of off of that site and uh, and get your tickets. I mean it's going to be a great great week uh, at Seas, and probably uh, I, I don't know I, I don't know if I've ever seen a collection of of uh, of top notch talent like this on uh, as many cruises as the, as there have been out there, uh, the type right. of acts that they have all together on this one is uh, is pretty daunting. And it really is. To be a part of it. Oh yeah, you're right up there with the big dogs now. <laughs> That's a crazy lineup, man. I mean, you got Lenny yeah. who I yeah. want to marry, <laughs> Joe Scott, who's gonna be my second ex wife, and then you got oh my dude. Yeah, yeah. It's, wow. It's, it's going to be tough. Even... It's going to be tough. Wow. And then yours, yours, yours truly, I'm... little old me from uh, from Detroit. So, yeah, I mean, it's, we're, we're, uh, we're, I'm we're, you, uh, we're making some moves. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's such a blessing. I'm I mean, this whole, that's, that's this whole run, company, this whole run of mine has been pretty, pretty you know, it's a, in the music business, it's up and down. Uh, right. You know, you can't, and I, I was always told you can't get too high up, you can't get too low at the lows because you're never as bad as you think you are. You're never as good as you think you are. So as long as you stay even keel and uh, stay humble uh, and keep trying to perfect your craft, trying to make good music. I mean, even some of the dark days where I thought, hey, nobody's paying attention. I'm making these, this music and, you know, I'm going broke and, and my wife is looking at me <laughs> side eyed like, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> right. You should be doing this and and so, I mean, it's uh, it 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 can get discouraging, but you know, the, the, what I was told was that you know, hey, people like your music, and uh, and that's what you need to do. You need to focus on making and creating good music, and and once you do that, uh, everything else will follow. And so that's what's 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 transpired over my last four projects. Uh, now working on my fifth, probably my funkiest, most soulful project to date. Uh, was, was what I'm finishing up right now. It's released in uh, 2015, but I've been blessed. Uh, this this whole year, I've had 10 top 30 uh, singles on the Billboard Contemporary Jazz charts, uh, mm-hmm. and I've, I've gone all over the world, traveled all over the world, and uh, I'm just getting started. So uh, that's that's what the, the beauty of this thing is about. Well, that is okay, so amazing. We got, we got to definitely we got to we got to find out. Tell tell our listeners, man, worldwide here. Where can we find you? Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. Because we gotta know, man. Because we gotta follow you. Dude. Oh yeah, man. I, I'm plugged. I'm plugged in deep on social media. I, mean, I got at Lynn Roundtree Twitter. I got Instagram. I don't really know my Instagram name. I'm just getting into that. But I got Facebook. <laughs> uh, I got Facebook page Lynn Roundtree. Make sure it's L I N Roundtree with no D R O U N T R E E. And uh, if you can't remember any of that, just go to LynnRoundtreeMusic.com. And from there, you can go anywhere, Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube. Nice. got a YouTube channel. Uh, you know, you have to take advantage nowadays of uh, social, mar- social media. Oh, definitely, uh, it's just, definitely. You know, it's, you know there's, a lot of, there's a lot of questionable things that go on in social media, but, you know, it is, it is, if you cannot run from it. You have to, you have to embrace it uh, because mm-hmm. it's, it's, the, it's the equalizer now. It's a way to get to your fans directly, whereas, uh, a few years back, you know, the only way to get to your fans was through industry uh, executives, and they had to decide yeah. whether or not, uh, you know, you were worthy of, of being introduced to uh, the, the mass masses, and, and you had to, you were at their at their mercy. Now, you know, good, bad, indifferent, you can get mm-hmm. your music straight to the people and allow allow them to make 
you know, make their own judgment about about Lynn Roundtree. So I mean, it, you know, so it's all out there. And, it, and and to some musicians, hey, look, it may be, it may expose some musicians, may expose some people as as uh, <laughs> because it's the it's it's the ultimate reality show. Uh, if you're not, if you're not doing, <laughs> right, that's right. You can be going and you get exposed, but, but for those for the for the talent people, for the people who who really just need a shot, I mean, it's the greatest thing ever. That's true. That's true. I know I've been hit a lot of times on on um on some of my social media. They like to come at me, but that's okay. I can take it. <laughs> but that's one <laughs> definitely. But I, I want to make sure people understand. You also you're on Pandora. So if you're listening, really, you know, yeah. Oh, God. yeah I've got okay, Pandora I can see right now. I gotta uh, I gotta plug that in when I go to work tomorrow. Yeah, I got a Pandora. For uh, for quite some time, I didn't even know actually uh, until a few years back. Somebody was saying, "Hey man, you 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 got, you're on Pandora." I was like, "Oh yeah, my songs come on there all the time." You know, once you submit your songs and and they're in mm-hmm. you know rotation nationally, they, they they get picked up somewhere. They said, "No man, you got your own channel." I was like, "What?" <laughs> so I was yeah. and, That's how good yeah, you are. I mean, <laughs> yeah, people. Well, well, I mean, people people take you know people take them to their cookouts and you know I'm I'm. You know, exactly. and on Liam so you know it's uh, right. it's it's and it never gets old to hear your stuff on the radio. It's like I'll drive around or walk to the airport, or you know, or, mm-hmm. you know, turn on XM radio or something, and, and one of my songs will be playing. And, you know, I know exactly how that song was put together. I played it. It's me, but and, and you and I've heard it over and over on the on the radio. I've had a lot of songs on the radio, but it, it's like it's still you get that five heartbeats moment where you, you jump out of bed. <laughs> Love that moment, yeah. I was on the radio. Stop, <laughs> I love that. Stop singing! Stop singing! Uh, <laughs> that is a good. That's a good question. I mean, so if okay, you're you're in, you're 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 in the middle of going. You're in between trips, going in between gigs. You're at the airport. Let's say you're at Atlanta Airport, and all of a sudden, over the loudspeaker, over the intercom, <laughs> one of your songs is on. Did you get an extra pet in your step when you walk into the next okay. game? <laughs> so it's like, I don't know if you guys play golf, but, you know, you can hit a million bad shots, but you hit that one good shot and it keeps you coming back. That's the mm-hmm. type yeah. that's the type of feeling you get because, you know, you could be so discouraged in this business and, and you know, the business can really beat you down. and You know, there's yeah, more right. negative things in the business than positive. I mean, you look for every morsel of positive uh, energy that you can find, and and that is a, is a mega dose of positive energy to know that, you know, somebody's millions of people, thousands of people are listening to your song right this minute, and you're the right. person, and that actually made this particular song, and it's blaring over some loudspeaker, and these people standing around, you don't even know who you are, you just want to jump up and say, hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh, yeah, song. right. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 right. That one I said that to somebody, and they didn't believe me. And that I would be me. Like, I would be like, look, hey, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm on the radio. I'm on the loudspeaker. Give me love now. I'm, that would be me. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm that, I mean, because I want the attention. I mean, you spent how many countless hours arranging that piece of music from your soul, and then to hear it in the middle of a big airport, and people so are bobbing the their heads to it, and like this is high. Yeah, this is the great. It's like, yeah, I made it. Listen to the songs. When you listen to the song, and you and you see people bopping their heads, or you see people enjoying it, like if you're at a restaurant, and you know people are in, in, enjoying the song, and I mean, and, and people, you know, from all over, they come see you at the shows. That's 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 very gratifying. I had a guy uh, bring his son. I, I did a show in Denver last year, this time uh, last January, and uh, uh, a guy brought his son all the way from. Uh, uh, Southern California because he said I hadn't been out there and he wanted to, they'd been following me for years uh, and he wow. wanted to introduce his son to me and he paid to get his son out there. They got a, a hotel room and I mean, you know, that stuff's reserved wow. for the, you know, the R&B acts and the big guys and you hear about that type of stuff all day, every day, but for somebody like me and my genre of music to, to have a guy, you know, go out on a limb and do that and know you and I had no idea. I mean, or showing up to a show and somebody you know, got a, a, a collage of, of your albums framed in a uh, in a poster. You know what I mean? With, uh, yeah, wow. with you're saying, "Hey, man, I've been waiting for years for you to come this way. I've got this collage here. Can you sign it?" 
I mean, and that's that that in and of itself is 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 the gratification and justification that you need uh, to keep going, and keep doing what you're doing, knowing that you're you're doing something right. Yeah, that's you cool, definitely man. are. That is really cool. Cool. You're doing something right, Lynn. We love you, and um, you got to come back um, when you have time to come back to us and just let us know what's going on, what's new out there for you. Um, but I first, I want you to tell us a little bit about uh, what we're about to get into, which is uh, your song, Gutter Funk. And um, <laughs> can you explain how that came to be? <laughs> Why did you name it that? <laughs> Oh, you know what? We it's you know some, I, I've written fifty something songs, and mm-hmm. you know it, song names come. You know, some of them come easy. Some of them you got to think about. This one came pretty easy because my producer uh, Nate Harrison and I had gotten a song in from uh, you know some you know I had guest producers. This guy named Sheree Reeves, bass player, great bass player, R. Kelly's bass player out of uh, Chicago. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Sent me this song through uh, through my manager Carmen Hatch, and uh, it uh, it was it was just a great tune when I heard it, and it was funky, and we needed to funk the album up because the album was starting to get a little smooth, a little smoothy smooth for me. <laughs> um, and we we need to get uh, really smooth. some dirty funk, and so when, when we went to the studio, I said, "Hey man, you gotta listen to the song, man. See if we can put it fit it onto the album." And we played it, and and it, first note came on, and you hear that. That that P bass sound, that boop doop 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 boop. I'm like, man, that's dirty, man. That's nasty. It was like, man, that's some nasty <laughs> funk. Like we can't. I was like, man, that's 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 just gutter, man. It's, it's gutter. And uh, <laughs> and so we kept calling it gutter funk. Let's play the gutter funk song. You know, that's why you working on that. And we we hadn't intended on naming that song gutter funk, but we just kept using that slang every time we referred to the song. It it got written down. And it and, is. You know, Send each other samples of the song. He'll send it back to me. Oh, this is the gutter funk song. Song A, song B, the gutter funk song. He's like, you know what? Let's just leave it gutter funk. You know, let's just be <laughs> anti. See if it sticks. Because once people hear this, they'll they'll understand. You know, this is just gutter funk, man. And and it's 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 not gutter meaning dirty. Well, it's dirty, but it's not gutter meaning awful. It's gutter meaning what a gutter's true meaning is. Like a gutter right. on the house. Catch all, man. It catches everything. So it embodies. You know all of the funk elements that you, that you might consider uh, in a funk funk record uh, on this album. It's got everything. It's got the horns. It's got the slick moves. We even put a little jazzy line in the back. And my man Randy Scott. I, you know, as much as I talk about saxophone players on this gutter funky mm-hmm. song, I had to go get me a sax player, man, on this one. And my man Detroit <laughs> Randy Scott. You know, he he listened to it. He said, "Hey, man, can I have this for my album?" I'm like, "No, nah, dude, but you, you can play on it for mine." <laughs> and, uh, he laid it down over the over the track too, and uh, and uh, man, it came. It, it was righteous. So I mean, uh, that's 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 how the song came to be. Well, thank you so much, Lynn. We appreciate you coming on. You are amazing, and um, you have to come back. That's all. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Definitely, all there is to it. No question. Uh, guys, and really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And you know, without without. Uh, uh, mouthpieces like yourself and listeners and, and and you know we wouldn't be anything so I mean I really really appreciate the opportunity coming back and I'll come back anytime you need me and uh, hope to see you guys out uh, at some point on out on the trails oh yeah Matter absolutely fact, hey time, maybe I'll be on the cruise bring, <laughs> bring look bring the horn let's, next time let's do it <laughs> All right. Thank- next time, and just just do something for us right in the studio. That's what I'm talking about. Live. Blah, blah, okay. Blah. Anyway, we're we're not gonna listen to them live. We have gutter uh-huh. funk that we're about to listen to right now. So thank you so much, Lynn, for coming on to the show, and we appreciate it. And we're about to get into your song, Gutter Funk. Thank you so much. God bless you. Ah, oh, bless you. Thank you. 